Hey everybody, welcome to a new series of videos on the Techmoto channel uh, looking at electronics. So my background is, uh, is in electronics teaching and I thought it'd be a really good idea um, to put a series of videos together to show you how to do basic electronics. Electronics and what I'm talking about here is electronics in layman's terms. So it's not going to get particularly high tech, um, but it'll just enable the sort of hobbyist to to have a go. And if you've got some ideas about putting some lights on your crash helmet or whatever it might be, uh, this will help you on your journey. Now we're going to start with um, the things you need to make up um, an electronic circuit to simulate the circuit before you actually make it um, permanent. So these two things here are called breadboards. Now these are incredibly common in the electronics world. It's um, a tool that enables you to simulate your circuit just by putting components in, no soldering, no messing about, um, and just to see if it works or not. And of course once it works on the breadboard you can then take it further and you can uh, make a PCB, a, a circuit board, or um, you can just solder a few bits to, and pieces together. But for now, I'm just going to show you how, how these work. So um, it's a bit odd called a breadboard, it always confuses my students, um, but it's uh, it's basically a board full of uh, individual holes. So each one of these holes you can plug components into. So if I just take an LED, which I will talk about in a future video, I can just push that into those holes there like that. And they will go anywhere. I can just stick them in and it holds it nice and tight. Um, you can stretch your legs on the LED and put one in there and one in there. doesn't really matter um, where you put it. But how all these holes are connected together is the important part. So when we're building a circuit, we want to create a closed loop. Um, and so we want to um, put together a circuit with a battery, with an LED and any other components you've got. Um, that actually functions so that the current flows around the circuit in the right way. Now there's two different breadboards here, but you can see um, that they're pretty much the same thing. This circuit board is just a smaller version. And if you look closely at this one, you've got a red line here that goes up to here and then it stops in the middle, a blue line that stops in the middle. And if I overlay that, it's exactly the same. So these long ones are just two of these. Now we're gonna start with um, how the holes are lined up. You'll notice that down at the side here, there is a blue line and there is a red line. And on the other side, there is a blue line and there is a red line. Now these are called power rails. And the reason they're called power rails is because we're gonna connect our uh, battery to this. And then in the middle here, whenever we're doing anything with our circuit, we're gonna pull our power off these rails into the middle of the circuit. Now, the important thing to realize here is that each one of these holes that run adjacent to the blue lines are connected together. So if I was to put something in this hole here, so I take that LED there and I stick that leg in there. And if I get another LED and I poke it in here adjacent to the blue line like that, what I've effectively done is I've attached that leg and that leg of the LED together because this is all connected. In the same way, the holes next to the red line are all connected. So if I take the LED and I poke it in there, and I poke it in there, what I've just done is I've connected that leg and that leg together. Now, if I move the LED anywhere along that line and plug it into the holes next to the red line, I've connected those two together. Just imagine that this is a wire down here. Now, importantly, the holes next to the red line and the holes next to the blue line are not connected together. So if I take my LED and I put it across those holes there, they are not connected. Now in the middle, instead of going vertically like this, they go horizontally. So that hole there is connected to that hole there and all those holes in between are connected. So there's a wire between them. So if I put my LED in here, those two legs are connected together. If I put my LED here, those two legs are connected together. The line next to it, with a number two next to it, is another line, but those are not connected to the holes above it. Now, I realize that that's confusing, um, but what I've done is I've taken the back off this one. 
um, just so that you can see how it's wired up. So you can see on the sides here, the power rails, there is a, a solid piece of metal that runs down the line here, which is where the blue line is. And there is a solid piece of metal down here, which is where the red line is. And then in the middle, you've got your tracks. So hopefully that'll make it easier to understand. Um, pay notice to this bit in the middle. These are not going all the way across. So there is a gap here on the breadboard. So if I take my LED and I put it across the gap like that, those legs are not attached together. And that's really important. And they've done that for a reason, um, so that we can fit microchips and other components down the middle. Um, now, just to give you an example of how you might use this, I'm going to take a 9-volt battery. I'm going to take a 9-volt battery clip. And I've got a red wire and I've got a black wire. The red wire is the positive, the black wire is the negative. Now, what I do is I run the black into the blue line on this side, which makes all the holes down this side of the breadboard negative. And I put the red one into the red line on the opposing side. So all of these down here now are positive, all of these down here are negative. If we take one of our LEDs and we were to bridge the gap between these two, the LED would have current flowing through it. But for anybody that knows about electronics, a 9 volt battery, a PP3 battery and an LED will just result in the LED being blown up. Um, there's too much current going through it. So I'm just going to take this component here. Don't worry too much about these components. I'll cover them in future uh, videos. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the gap from the positive to the negative uh, through a resistor which resists current and lowers the current to protect the LED. So I'm going to take that from the positive. So it's plugged into that positive line and I'm going to take it to a random place over here in the breadboard. So at the moment, We've got a connection going through the positive, down this line of the red, over the resistor, and then it stops in this line. Now I can connect the positive to the negative with my LED now, making sure that my legs are the right way round, because an LED has a long leg and a short leg. The long leg is the anode, the short leg is the cathode. Uh, this one goes to the positive, the long leg. So I can put that in line with my resistor, like so. So we've got positive through the resistor, through the LED and when I plug that into the negative line we now have a circuit. Now just to complicate matters current flows from positive uh, from negative to positive um, so we'll we'll treat it like that it's coming up this line here it's going along here it's going through the LED it's going through this one horizontally it's going through our resistor which is protecting it it's coming back down this line and then it's going back into the battery so we have our loop. Now I can do that anywhere on the breadboard. I can pull that resistor out there and I could put it into that hole there. I could move my LED and as long as I've got all the holes lined up with the wires and things that I want it will work. Now what's quite interesting is you can mess with this to your heart's content. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the power line into the middle there and then I'm going to run a resistor to the positive line there. So what I've got is the negative coming into my negative power rail. I've got my positive going through a resistor into my positive rail. So now what I've got is I've got my positive and negative power rails, but it's got a reduced current. So I can just take an LED now and make sure I've got the right around because the long leg is the positive. And I can just whack that. He says he's got it in the wrong hole. There you go. It's easy to make a mistake with this, but you'll spot it straight away. So I've got one LED there, which is lit up and it's protected by the resistor. I can take another LED and poke it into my power rail there because it's protected by the resistor. And I can keep doing this to my heart's content with as many LEDs as I like, wiring them up there in parallel. So if any of these break, the rest will continue to shine. Now, that's a brief explanation of how a breadboard works. You can use microchips and transistors and capacitors and, and whatever you want on the breadboard, but it enables you just to see if your idea works before you start getting too far down the line with your design. There you go. I hope that helps. 
Um, any questions do post in the comments. Uh, I'm going to be posting a lot more videos on electronic theory. Um, this is just a starting point. So please do like, subscribe, um, follow the videos. If you've got any ideas as to what you want to see covered, um, I'll do a video on it. Uh, let me know. Uh, catch up with you soon. Cheers.